information coming out trying to get Hello and welcome back. We have Dr. Madawa Glover. She is going to give us a presentation on her squirrel program. Welcome, Madawa. Hi, and fantastic uh, program you're running here. I've just been enjoying it so much. Thank you for that. I'm going to open up your presentation and we'll do this as we normally do, okay? Okay. <laughs> There you go, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so I've really been looking forward to sharing more about my new course. It's a free online course and it teaches about dependency on smoking and all the stop smoking methods. So I'm going to go through the course and I hope we have time for questions. So you could put those there and Nancy will keep an eye on them and interrupt me. But I do have quite a bit to get through. So, right, my disclosures first. Uh, I've never received funding from any tobacco or vaping product company. Uh, this study, this intervention and course, and I'm going to be evaluating it, was funded by the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World, a non-profit 5013C uh, private foundation. They were established with a charitable donation from Philip Morris International, and under the bylaws uh, of the state they were established in, they have to be completely independent from their donors, or otherwise they're not a charitable um, organization and under the terms of my contract with the foundation the work I do is mine editorially independent of the foundation the contents selection presentation of facts are the opinions I express here within this presentation are my sole responsibility and under no circumstances are to be regarded as reflecting the position of the foundation thank you very much so what is squirrel so squirrel is something us researchers do, we make up tricky little names, but it stands for supporting quitting, understanding the theory of dependency, and increasing your knowledge of replacements and remedies for smoking, an online course. So I hope you think that is clever. And if you please go to our squirrel.net website, there's some more story about the the squirrel, Rama's squirrel, uh, the myth in India. Now, squirrel is a free online course. As I said, it's about really increasing people's understanding of why it can be hard for some people to stop smoking. And also we look at all the stop smoking methods and aids. It's in everyday language and we also use digital games that's our primary teaching tool so hopefully it's fun and uh, makes that easier and to engage with and learn it's a different way of learning so some of you particularly will you know would prefer this way of learning it's not lectures and chalk and talk and it's ideal for busy people who prefer to learn at their own pace who is Squirrel for? Now, I have designed this specifically for people who work in low and low middle income countries, community health workers, social workers, people who work with people who smoke on in their everyday jobs, not specifically smoking cessation workers, not, it's not something that qualified doctors and nurses would expect uh, the language level and the way of learning. I also uh, obviously have been thinking of in making it applicable and attractive to indigenous community health workers and people who work or serve, uh, work with or serve indigenous communities. I also was thinking of vape shop staff. There has been a call for training from vape shop staff around the world. And I think also, well, just from some of the people who have had a look at it for me, I came to realize, well, it, it might be useful for advocates as well, 
who support people with switching. For example, many of you are involved in forums online, Facebook, or uh, you, you have YouTube channels, and you support people and, and give them advice and encouragement to switch. So I think that it may be useful for you guys as well. And um, it's also open to staff who work in hybrid stores that sell a range of tobacco and nicotine products. And that includes tobacconists. And I'm making that point because, you know, in, in tobacco control, tobacconists are excluded. Uh, you know, using the Article 5.3 of the Framework Convention Tobacco Control, many tobacco control training programs and seminars and conferences are closed to people who work in hybrid stores, people who sell tobacco, basically. So why did I develop this? Well, 80% of people who smoke in the world live in low middle income countries and indigenous peoples have been left behind. And the Framework Convention Tobacco Control recognizes that. And I and Pooja and Cairo have a paper. It's free to read and I've put the link at the bottom of the slide. There's a lack of stop smoking support in many countries and for left behind groups. And the other thing, maybe one of the main things, is that a lot of stop smoking programs are based on outdated theory and they are very, um, they're not very effective. So we need to catch up and with the evidence and latest theories. Community workers, especially those that work in indigenous communities, are often uh, respected and more acceptable to the people they work with. So they can be good messengers and often help from them. It feels like it's coming with more love rather than the tick box you know, condescending, uh, making people feel bad, which which a lot of people do get from smoking cessation services. And vape shop staff see people who smoke every day and their peer-to-peer -peer approach is highly effective. So the structure of the course, there are two modules. The first module builds a more holistic understanding of why people smoke and why it can be hard to stop. It builds knowledge of the differences be between people who maybe have a light dependency on smoking versus those who have a more medium or heavier dependency. And it's based on the latest theory. Uh, the module two teaches about the, a wide range of methods and products uh, that people can use to help them stop smoking and also conveys which of those methods work better for people who are light, medium, or have a heavier dependency. And that's based on the evidence to date. It's not a lot of uh, stats and you know research. As I said, this is, this is pitched really at a, what we call lay level, or you, know, you don't have to have prerequisite training. Now, the module is structured in this way. Uh, you enroll to apply, you apply to enroll. <laughs> there are three lessons and it takes roughly about a week. Uh, I would say allow a week for each of those. Within each lesson, you play the game. There's a quiz, may either post the games or in-game quiz. And then there are three recommended readings that might be a reading, a video to watch, uh, and or case stories to read. Then there, after the three lessons, so say three weeks of lessons, there's a three week study break. The purpose of this is to give people a chance to go back, you know, keep working. It's really for people who are already working with people all the time. And then, you know, you can start to sort of reflect on what's in the game, what you're learning as you're working with people on the job. Three week study break. And then coming back and there's a reflective task and evaluation questions. Each module should take about six to eight weeks. I know that sounds a lot, but as I said, this is made for people who are working, who are busy, you know, and maybe only have at max one to two week, two hours a week. So the learning outcomes for module one, and maybe I won't have time to go in depth into all of these, 
and uh, more information is available on the website. I've already mentioned some of that, you know, identifying some of the triggers to stop smoking and some of the barriers that get in the way of stopping smoking and developing a deeper understanding of the role of people's circumstances in that, uh, their emotions and their beliefs and the opportunities they're presented with. And the course also encourages you to reflect upon how your own beliefs and attitudes maybe affect how you are working with people and how you're supporting people. So this is just a snapshot of what's in uh, the module one game. And there are there's a character who's walking along and things happen to them. And it, it's kind of you're following a character through their journey of trying to stop smoking. The recommended readings may be short, one page, uh, a little bit of information, really at an introductory level around nicotine dependency or how do you know if somebody's light, medium or heavier dependency. And then each lesson, there are some case stories, three case stories we've picked from the Voices of the 5% study that we have. And we've picked case stories that illustrate what you're learning that week. So that's a, a snapshot of the Voices of the 5% study website. We have 62 people, very diverse, diverse in age and, and experiences and circumstances. They've all tried quitting in many different ways. They all experienced different barriers. Uh, so we, our different studies kind of gives a program of research. So there's a lot of crossover. The assessment in module one, there are some questions at the beginning. There are the post-game or in-game quiz. And then there's some, after the study break, some follow-up knowledge questions, including asking you to, to write a very short uh, case study of your own, someone you've been working with perhaps, a reflective assignment thinking about how you work with people and uh, how you could maybe improve on that, and then just some course evaluation questions. So module two focuses on the range and efficacy, how effective all of the different methods and aids that are out there to help people either reduce their, uh, how much they smoke or how to stop smoking. And again, encouraging you to reflect on your own beliefs and attitudes towards these different methods. And then uh, hoping to develop a deeper understanding of the different ways that people can reduce their risk of smoking related harm. So this is a snapshot from game two and the different characters, uh, they go into different shops or services and find out what the, what's there, what products exist to help them to stop smoking. So in the bookshop, uh, they, you know, there's a book, um, I've called it, you know, it's a quit in a day book. And so there's information to read inside the stores. You have to find things and, you know, earn kind of acorns uh, of knowledge. This is another snapshot where the character has gone into a counsellor uh, and is going to ask the counsellor what that counsellor can do for them to help them. There are three lessons in module two as well. And the, the different games uh, teach you like what's going to work for a person who smokes lightly, medium or heavier. The assessment very similar, each module's structured in a very similar way. So we've got some knowledge questions at the start so we can assess if we are actually changing anything for you or helping. There's in-game quizzes and then a follow-up knowledge test, another reflective task and then final overall course evaluation questions. So, um, how can you get involved? I would really like uh, you to get involved uh, in the development of Squirrel. We currently are looking for about 100 people who meet our criteria that I put at the front, uh, 21 
years and over, different countries, some are 18 plus, but uh, so we're looking for people to participate in the evaluation study. But even if you don't fit that criteria, please don't let that put you off because I'm likely to let you do the course anyway. You might not be part of the evaluation study, but you can still apply and do the course. And any feedback we get at this stage is gonna help us improve it and, and develop it, make it more effective for more people uh, around the world. So, and in the future, we, we hope to translate it into Russian. Spanish and French in that order so that it, it will be able to be used by people throughout Latin America, North of Africa, and of course in the uh, Eastern Europe countries where quite a lot of countries uh, have Russia, it, Russian as their main language. We could develop more modules. I mean, it will depend on the feedback we get from everybody about what more is wanted. Um, and, and we could develop modules that take the knowledge to the next level. So a little bit more advanced, having done the first two modules, people might say, well, I'd really like to know more about this or more in depth on this, etc." We could develop a forum for people who are doing the course and or graduates so that people can talk and share uh, and learn from each other as well. And we could have or add later on, maybe if it's wanted, optional online talks or tutorials or Zoom sessions. And of course we could adapt it for different countries. So at the moment I'm not, I'm not marketing this in India because the Indian government has banned electronic cigarettes and they also have a ban on any research regarding electronic cigarettes and vaping. So out of respect for that, I. I won't be pushing it there. Uh, so my, for the evaluation, I'm trying to recruit in New Zealand, Russia, uh, Nigeria, Pakistan, um, Canada, particularly focused on indigenous communities there or anybody who, who works in areas where there are indigenous customers and hopefully Malaysia. They have three large indigenous populations there. So uh, if you're interested in applying to do the course or you want to find out more, here's the website and we have info at squirrel.net. I think that's all I had. So we have plenty of time for questions and you know ideas. Oh, I, do, I do really want to thank uh, people that have helped me develop this. Mark um, and and Andrew and Sydney, uh, Michael Brader, uh, Chugga is a co-investigator on this project. Oh, so many people, John Oyston in, ca in Canada. Uh, yeah, Professor Dennis Vilehand from here at Massey University, who's an expert in mass open online courses. So it's, it's been a huge effort, lots of people, and I really, and I'm open to more people being involved and helping us really take this forward. Thank you. So I can go back to any slides, Nancy, if there's, uh, if you want to know any more or more detail. Okay, I'll leave it up. Um, so far, there's no real questions. People, um, I, I, I don't know if you can see the comments, but I'm going to read some of them. Chug is in a camping ground and wouldn't miss this for the world. Uh, Mark, got him out of the woods and it's hunting season. Um, Liana said that it's brilliant and it's on her blue collar level. I've shared the link to the squirrel site and also to the voices of the 5% and asked people for questions. And everybody just thinks it's brilliant. I, I think it's really needed. You know, most of the focus uh, is... There's, I, th I think there's a lot of focus on trying to train well, and on training doctors. Of course, doctors are important and nurses, but community health workers and people who, even social workers, budget advisors, uh, you know, there's, there's people that see people who smoke every day and they're not there to help people stop smoking, but sometimes it comes up. I think also 
from our my own research, which is you know over thirty years, people who smoke are often talked to in a very um, unhelpful way. So they often avoid healthcare workers, like pregnant mums, for instance, in New Zealand, expect midwives and health professionals to tell them off. So they'll often hide the fact that they smoke. If they hide the fact that they smoke, then they're not going to get support if they wanted it. So I've really seen the attitude towards people smoke change, become judgmental. It's often condescending. I mean, what people say about quitline, and it's in our Voices of the Five uh, percent mm -hmm. study. I mean, one young woman, Māori woman, I just thought this was brilliant, and she said, um, it's, "You know, they don't really help." She said, "It's just like they shadow you." I mean, isn't that brilliant? They just, you know, they just ring up. How are you going? And and in the end, she felt so harassed that she asked her husband to block the caller. You know, block their their number. Yeah, when they call you. Yeah. Yeah, and another yeah. one. Another person, another Māori Indigenous person said they, not just quit line, but in reference to a lot of smoking cessation counsellors, they're boneless. Um, I, I guess you could kind of, you know, they just don't feel that these people care about them. They don't, it's so top down and uh, we need to change that. And this is why vape shops around the world are, I would say, helping more people to quit than all of the your usually trained or officially trained stop smoking counsellors the whole world over. It's um, the theory they're using is out of date. That causes them to have a particular attitude to people who smoke. You know, older theories were like, and many of you may know about that, you know, like addiction is a disease. In tobacco control, we kind of deliberately did that. It was like, if people, if people looked at smoking as a mental illness, well, that would put them off. So the whole addiction as a disease is really more of a strategy to uh, trigger people into quitting and we got any questions anyone well, want to we've know got a, we've got one two things I want to bring up first Leah mentioned something and this relates to me as well Leah with my first child my doctor told me not to stop smoking maybe cut back but don't quit because the baby was already used to the nicotine in my system I had the same experience actually um, then we have two questions uh, could you explain more about the the approach to learning with this course? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, can I, I can I flick out? I don't like to flick too quickly. You know, it's like yeah. beware of strobing. <laughs> so yeah. if we go back up to a picture of the game. So the main teaching method is to play a digital game and the character it, it's a journey, so it's it's like those games you play where you're journeying through an environment, and there's there's learning, there's learning to pick up along the way. I'm just trying to get back up to that other one without going too quickly for you. Okay, so game one, the character journeys along, and you roll the dice, and they move along through different environments uh, and everything has a meaning so when you play the game it's kind of more an experiential learning you can relate to okay now I'm this character and this is what's happening to me so in that bottom picture you can see the person there's warning sandstorm and they're they're going backwards so this is quite typical when People are trying to stop smoking. They go forward, they go back. Uh, there are quotes, which gives you an idea of the different things that people think uh, and are saying to themselves. Some things that people say to themselves are positive and some are negative, if you know what I mean. So there's um, different elements 
that are embedded in the game that the game is designed upon to teach you the theory without actually sort of lecturing to you or going, you know, da, 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 da. <laughs> so it's supposed to be more fun. You don't, you know, it's really just engage, play, read the recommended readings, work with, go about your work. And I hoped, you know, I could only hope that it would work. But I have had a few people already look at it to give me early feedback and I've had some had some good feedback. I mean, one but one person said, I, I don't know why there's a game. I don't think I get it. And so I just had some questions, asked them some questions, and it turned out they totally got it, like 100%. So I was really, really, it works, it works. But I do want to prove it by, by doing an evaluation. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier that this course could be good for THR advocates. So can you explain how we could apply the lessons that are in this to our advocacy? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. So, so one, I thought that, I mean, many THR advocates are, you know, absolutely there all the time, 24-7 online. Any, anybody who smokes can find people online who can give them advice about a product or what might work for them. I mean, it, it's just with the huge social media THR vape fam online, there is, there's always people there. And many of those people, they have no theoretical training. Uh, it's, it's mainly based on personal experience. And many people want to know more. Uh, many people who work in vape shops want to know more. So this is answering that call without expecting you to go and you know, enroll in a university course and have to give up a year of your life or something to to get a to get a certificate. Uh, this this is really getting that information out there in a more fun way. You can dip in and dip out. Um, now, the other thing I want to mention is I have focused on smoking, and that's because that's responsible for the majority of the harm that is caused by a tobacco product. It is mainly cigarettes. And so I've mainly focused on smoking, but there is no reason why you, the same lesson in here about the theory could not be applied to people who are working with people who want to stop using good girl, or, you know, a smokeless product or SNOS for instance. Uh, and yeah, so that, that's important. Question for you, because there are quite a few smoking cessation people that I know here in New Zealand, and they have said that they've encountered people that are vaping that want help to stop vaping, which sounds weird to most of us, but it does exist. Would this be suitable for them as well? Sure, because it's about, especially the uh, module one, is about understanding why people smoke and or vape and and why they find it difficult to stop um so i mean you could even you could even apply the same theory to why people struggle to diet you know uh yeah. but but it is specifically i mean this is obviously the quotes are about smoking and stopping smoking but the underlying theory can be used it's about behavior change and it's about how you support people to make a behavior change. I didn't answer your previous question about tobacco harm reduction advocates. So maybe you have advocates who don't actively work with people who, who smoke or people who want to stop vaping or using a snorse or a smokeless product. But I think that there's definitely, the theory has relevance for advocacy in the sense that uh, how, how do we how do you change behavior including how do you change the behavior of people who are anti um, I can see that it would help and it's also on topic and why not just learn as much as you can the more authoritative you sound and your your messaging um, 
you know, may become more effective. I don't know, but I mean, I'm certainly open to, if you want to enroll, I would love to have more, you know, consumers try it out, especially advocates, especially advocates that help others on a daily basis or in your work and your work is focused. Why not understand more about how hard it is to stop? Most of you know that already from your own personal experience, um, but not everybody's the same, you know, like, okay, your experience is not the same as everybody else's. And we had that here in New Zealand, we had one of the, uh, the M members of parliament and he just used to say, oh, you should all just quit. That's how I stopped. You should all just quit. Yeah. Yeah. So when people... I've encountered that. Mm, so when people is, sort of go, well, I know what it's like. I did this. And they think everyone else should be able to do that. They're wrong. And most of you do say, you know, different folks for different strokes for different folks. And that's why in module two, we look at all of the different methods and aids that are available. And actually there's a whole lot. Does that help? Yeah, I think that answers the question. Everybody's just like checking out the site. You, you <laughs> run over. Um, hey, come back. Re <laughs> I'm reading the glossary of terms, how helpful. It's a great learning approach. Um, Pip is here and she says hi. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the comments? Yes, I can. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here yeah. giving you comments. But no, yeah, I can't. I, I don't. I can't read them all. As you know. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I keep putting the link up there, um, and you know, if you're all right with that, I'll share the link with everybody um, in Asia Pacific. Oh, oh, yes, please. I mean, any contacts mm -hmm. any of you have. Uh, for people who work in Malaysia, potentially with the different indigenous groups there. Uh, you know, I, I really am in the process now. I need to find a hundred people who fit our criteria uh, to, to be in the evaluation. And then, as I said, well, why not let others do it anyway? And I'm just saying, well, you know, please just give us any feedback. I'd love to hear more from from people, from the people it's been made for, about, well, what's missing? What more do you want to know? Uh, you know, and it, just keeping in mind though, that it is it is at a introductory level, but then again, it is at a, a different way of learning as well. I think also, you know, not to blow my own heart, horn, but this is my area of expertise. I've been, you know, in tobacco control and particularly cessation, smoking cessation is my area of expertise. So I have 20 more, you know, nearly 30 years. Um, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people. I've trained hundreds of people in the old methods. I've trained them in the old methods. I've seen what works. I've seen what, how ineffective many of those methods have been actually, how disappointing that's been. And we need to up our game. Uh, and then, of course, over that time, I've seen the compassion go out of it altogether. The condescending, you you can't, they can't be like that. In my psychology training, you know, one of the things we learn is, especially if you go see a counsellor, that's a therapeutic relationship. The basis yeah. of a therapeutic relationship is care and mm -hmm. compassion and understanding. Uh, you know, and Patrick knows all about this and the work that he does, and we've talked about this. And when you have people in tobacco control in the prohibitionist echo chamber, that is not, you know, I mean, their attitude to people who smoke, to people who vape, to advocates is, is you know, pretty nasty. And of course, we they create those campaigns to shame, they believe um, they believe they have to shame the person. So you're going to go to a counsellor who's been trained to, to poke you, to create, they call it cognitive dissonance, to create discomfort in you. They want you to, they want to attack your identity. And the whole theory is that if they attack your identity and your sense of well-being, then you, you will want to change that. You want to get back to being well again and, and feeling good about yourself. It's so damaging. 
and I mean, people flawed. In that, yeah, people in that position, I, like I said, I know a lot of smoking cessation providers, and they go up against the system. And I'm talking, you know who I'm talking about. I don't have to mention it. You know who oh, I'm talking about. Oh, there's a lot. About. Well, Lower North Island. Yeah, see? Um, and, you know, they... I just want the vapors and the other people to understand that, you know, though they are our allies, there are more allies there than we know of, but they are like, we've been discussing, you know, scientists and things like that. They also are up against the machine as we put it, or, um, social engineering as Roberto put it. Uh, we, when, when somebody comes to you for help, and this is what Marwa was saying, and I've encountered this, and I think we all have with dealing with our GPs, or if we've dealt with a, one of those kinds of smoking cessation provider, you're vulnerable. You are yeah. so vulnerable. And that is like the worst position to be in and then have somebody just denigrate you. And it happens far too often. And we can't do that to other people. We can't do that to people. Like, I'm going to bring this up. We can't do it to smokers because we were all smokers and we're not hypocrites. Um, we can't do it to people who do things differently than we do. If they use snus or they use heated tobacco, we can't keep committing these same crimes because that's what it is, Madawa. It's, it causes people to smoke, you know? I mean, if mm -hmm. it, we need to build people up, not rip them down. <laughs> and then, you know, for yeah. people to come away, like that young woman who was, it was like, that. well, they, they just shattered her and then they, she just felt harassed by them and then it just becomes a stress and of course one of the things why did people smoke you know one of the triggers to smoke is stress uh, I, I saw a demonstration once a woman who was who was um, promoting her program that was about helping young Māori pregnant women to stop smoking and she did a role play in front of us all oh my gosh I I don't know it was so bad I was like I felt so bad for the young woman and it you know you had this older white woman and she was talking you know like really softly to the young woman and you know she was doing her cessation thing counseling thing it was even that condescending thing you know like I'm better than you I know better than you and I can help you because you're sick and or you you don't have enough education to know how to fix yourself. You know, this is, and now we have people all around the world and now we have people that believe in that method going into low, low income countries, low LMICs and teaching people there to do that. The it's not thing. going to, yeah. And, so that's why uh, I really wanted to get this out there and uh, okay, we have a try and start addressing that. This is probably the first self-help online course I have seen for smokers seeking to quit. Are there any other such initiatives that you are aware of? There's lots of, there are a lot of apps. There are a lot of self-help stop smoking apps, but now, many of them are not at all based on any kind of evidence about what works. So they're just apps out to make money. Um, you know, and, and in module two, I don't just talk about the, the methods and aids that work. I also give you some, you know, I also introduce other things that are being pushed on people where the evidence actually says, no, this doesn't work. So there's a lot of snake oil stuff, you know, yeah. and that's what you'll learn about in this course. I also okay. talk about the, the methods that are under development. So experimental methods, psychedelics, for instance. Mm -hmm. So what you will learn is beyond what is being taught to people who are working in smoking cessation. Okay. And that's fine because for one, a lot of tobacco harm reduction advocates and consumers are much more open. Yeah, I mean, as we know, and we've been talking about all week, many people in tobacco control, the narrative is very controlled. They're told what to believe about these products. We see it every day on Twitter some of these guys slamming vaping, slamming snus, slamming oral nicotine products. And yeah, so, 
you people doing this course i guess in some ways it's this course is not for them i don't even think i don't even think they would learn from it if they've been trained in that way and they are anti harm reduction which that one of the theories underpinning this course is harm reduction the principles of harm reduction start where people are at mm -hmm. uh, Meet them where they are un, yep understand that not everybody is, might want to stop smoking not everyone may be able to stop smoking and you'll come to understand why when you play the game uh, harm reduction is about having compassion and understanding for people it's about finding something that will work even if only a little bit at this time so people who are anti a harm reduction approach who are all for could or die this is not for them yeah. people who um want to learn more or want to be more effective for the people they're working with they're focused on the client they're focused on their customer they're focused on helping people maybe a family member i had another person who was testing it for me and he said he's not nothing to do with tobacco control or even this topic but he said oh oh i can see how i could have better supported my friend who was a heavy smoker that's fabulous you know so will it's designed for people who are out there working in the community of course some people have family members who smoke and and they've been trying to get them to stop and it's been frustrating and maybe this game would help them too at this at this stage i, I mean i wouldn't put them in my evaluation study because the I'm not evaluating whether or not it would work for family members. I'm not evaluating whether or not it would work for consumers. I think it would. I think I think it could work for consumers and I'm happy to have some consumers, you know, enrolled and give me feedback on, you know, how whether or not it was useful for them. Yeah, no, I put the link in about six times. Um <laughs> Pippa said the next level of this will be, then be putting it onto the metaverse. Yes, she's always thinking ahead. Then, oh, oh, I'll be interested to hear more about that, Pippa. Yeah, <laughs> any, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm up against some fairly serious barriers with, um, you know, with my center and me being blacklisted and gagged. Uh, there are many, many people who will never get to hear about this. There are, are many people who might even really want to do it but they just won't hear about it so i really am reliant on and appreciate the help that the vape fam all of you advocacy organizations advocates can do you know to get the word out and i think and i don't expect you to get the word out without you having knowledge of how it works you know i'm happy for you to try it uh, so when you email me say why you want to do it and I'm hoping that people who do do it um, will then know, you know, like who they know who it would work for. All right. Um, you know what? Can you do me a favor? Do you want me to put your email address in the chat? That's, uh, well, I mean, for this, it's info at squirrel.net. But okay. yeah, so. All right, I'll put it in there. I'm going to put it in there. Hold on. Okay. My other email, my email is like, well, I just get drowned every day. Um, yes. Yeah, so. There's lots of apps to help people stop smoking. We talk about those in module two. Uh, I think, I don't think there's anything like this. Um, I did develop a game once before. It was called Stub It Out. It was an iPad game. And that that wasn't like this. This, it was more like a distraction tool and you stub out cigarettes and you go up different levels. So, yeah, I actually started my career as a computer programmer and I bring, I'm bringing together my expertise and smoking cessation, my previous background in computer programming. And so it's, it's funny how it's all come together that I, you know, making, making websites like this and games like this, it's, it's so enjoyable uh, and it's also something that is kind of easy for me obviously i'm not doing it all on my own i'm not drawing i have a fantastic graphics team uh, i hope it's funny but at the same time it's it's not like a game you know a lot of people who are gamers expect like oh you know it, it's not a game it's an educational tool and 
in the sector it's called gamification where you mm -hmm. gamification of learning material yeah to make I just powerful. want the last scene to be slimy slapman <laughs> <laughs> being hit with a wet fish. Ah, oh, that would see, I'm going to get some really great ideas because I do want sort of funny little things in there. And um, yeah, that would be good. You had another um, question, I think. Yeah. Is this program going to be free to download to anyone or do you, do users have to register? It's, You've got to apply, um, and part of that is about protecting it from, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, no, ma I know it's made for certain people, so people do need to apply, and it won't be for everyone. The game, you don't download it as such, it's an online course, so you go online, Mm -hmm. You can't get access to the whole course in one go. It's it's staged almost like a game in itself. You have to get through one level to get to the next level. You have to complete lesson one to get to lesson two. So any of you who thought, oh, yeah, I'll go out. We'll go and have a look. You know, that'll be, I'll just whiz through, have a look at it. Oh, that's not how it works. You'll have to enroll and you'll have to go through the various stages. It um, The later, like, you can't do module two without doing module one. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the the knowledge in there is it's a cumulative learning as well. So what you're learning as you go along, more is added the further you go along, if you get what I mean. So okay, there really, well, you know, really is kind of those educational steps in there as well. Well, Yolanda will supply the fish. And <laughs> um, Slimy certainly has the face. Liana would eat the fish. Okay, yeah, there we are. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, is there anything else, any final statement or something you'd like to say to everybody in Mattawa? Well, I mean, I, I could have said more, but I really, at, being at this early stage, I want to test whether gamification, whether this game, this course, delivers and can help people develop the understanding, which is the purpose of it without, um, I guess, without all of the scientific background to it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So Easily I didn't want to go, you know, I mean, you didn't ask me what's the theory. I mean, that's a whole nother different sort of lecture and would take a whole hour in itself for me to go through all the theories of addiction and dependency. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying, you know, people who want to enroll in university and do not that there's a lot of courses in tobacco control, but uh, you know, you don't have it. You don't have to have it. You can just do this, play games, look at the readings, read some case stories, and and practice it. Put it into practice, and then see what happens. And right, I want to know one, what happens. Got one final question written in caps, yelling at us, but apologizing for yelling at us. Is this something you would like to see used by government agencies as a part of their stop smoking programs? It's a very good question. And I think, you know, there's a number of us that have tried to shift uh, the smoking cessation sector. And again, that kind of goes into the whole educating about the, the history of smoking cessation. The gold standard became uh, De Clemente and Prochaska in the States and they they developed this, the gold standard of stop smoking method. Um, the stages of change, I don't know. I mean, if, if you've ever gone to any smoking cessation counselors or or heard anything about stop smoking theory or methods, uh, the stages of change one believes that believes that you have to want to quit. Have you heard that? Yes. Well, it's not going to work unless you want to quit. Um, they also are like that they develop, you know, the early stop smoking guidelines or smoking cessation guidelines that governments put out, including in New Zealand. And I was involved in that. And I used to teach this method because it was the gold standard at that time in 2000. I was the first trainer of 
stop smoking services in New Zealand of quit line and many others that came after that. And we taught the stages of change model. We taught that, you know, if someone comes in to see you, your health professional, and you ask them, you know, do you want to stop smoking? And they say, no, no, I like it. Just leave them for six months, right? Mm -hmm. Leave them for six months. Well, what if she's pregnant? You're going to leave her for six months? Too late, bro. You know, like you missed the boat. Um, and that's been the main theory from Prochaska and Di Clemente in the States. It's mm -hmm. still what they teach. It's the, they, it's become like more like not a lot of people in the sector don't understand what a theory is, you know, it's, yeah. um, and they, and they believe that it's more like a, I don't know, Bible, a tablet. This is the way it is, a, a fact mm -hmm. rather than it was just a theory guys. And look, yeah. 30 years has, or 20 years has shown us Hmm, that didn't quite work. And there's a lot of scientific evidence now that, that it, it was flawed. That isn't the way it works for everybody. If a pregnant woman comes in and she's smoking and she says she doesn't want to quit, you've got to try something because it's not just her. And if you're a health professional, it's your job to do your best to try and reduce the harm to that baby and, and for her and for the health of her pregnancy but yeah no if they say no just leave them for six months so many you know Hayden McRobbie many of us in tobacco control or not many but those at the sort of forefront have tried to change that and they just won't give it up once it's like once they're taught mm -hmm. I know it I don't need any more training mm -hmm. or you can't shift them it's just incredibly frustrating um, um, Yol Yol Yolanda is saying, so if it doesn't work, it's your fault for not wanting it enough. That's the that's theory right. behind. Yeah, and that's then Pippa, right. And then Pippa uh, is back with the fish. Maybe <laughs> after you slap the slimy slapman, you get to, to the last stage where you pop the giant balloonberg puffer fish. And everyone <laughs> lives happily ever after. Oh, I love those ideas. And I can already see the graphic, you know. So um, I. I definitely could have used things like that. Maybe at next level. Uh, to Just going back to, oh, yay, I've got someone who wants to enroll. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, and, you know, and, and any of you, there's a lot of people uh, who've been on Scope this week who have vape shops, who work in vape shops. You know, please, if I know you're all busy, but as I said, this is like one to two hours a week. Um, it really, it's designed not to take much of your time. Going back to harm reduction and a bigger, like taking a bigger view, your advocacy, the theory has been applied at that level as well. Um, and if you understand the theory, it comes across these elements that are taught in game one. And then you try to think, well, how could we apply that at a public health level, at a policy level? And also it can help you to assess policies in terms of what effect will they have? And we were talking about this yesterday. You have to understand people's circumstances. If you criminalize people who smoke or people who vape, you're increasing the determinants that become a trigger to smoke. And yeah. Yeah. This is awesome, Marawa. Thank you for sharing My, it with us. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to be doing some marketing. I would love any ideas any people have on where I could maybe, you know, like put an ad here or there, a different, um, different forum that, that go out to vape shops uh, around the world. You know, please, you know, please help. And let's see if we, we can get people enrolling and, I've got the, um, you know, I mean, I'm really grateful to the foundation for giving me the opportunity to make this course. And I'd love to take it further, as I said, translate it into other languages, especially to get it into, uh, you know, 
give people in Latin America with this huge number of indigenous mm. peoples and give them access to it as well. So yeah. Russian, Spanish, French, and then, you know, it would need to be in Portuguese, Portuguese, Spanish for Brazil. So there's a lot of work that I could still do, but I, I've got to have some kind of idea that it is working for people. So yeah. You might need it in Bahasa for Malaysia, but there's a bunch of different languages there as well. So see, this is I, the sort of thing that I need, yeah, you know, I need um, feedback on. I will contact the advocate we have in Malaysia and have him contact you and maybe you two can talk about that. Thank you, Nancy. That would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. In all seriousness, getting people to have that light bulb moment should and will be the core of training initiatives like this. You have something here, Matawa, that will appear appeal across cultures and Shannon is thanking you for a wonderful discussion and if I can just thank you Shannon and, and Pippa and if I just pick up on that point that Pippa made um, how do you make a course that does have appeal across different cultures and and countries so like here you can see we have a desert and we have an urban you know, an urban scene, and there are many different, well, there are several different environments in both games. So that, and it's not like one, it's not like you can go, oh, uh, oh, that's that country. So it's kind of generalized to, to have broader appeal. But I've already talked with some people who work in India, uh, and they feel like, you know, let's have a look at how it can be adapted for, you know, for there, given the bands that I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm so glad you shared this with us. Thank you, Marwa. No, thank you. I, I, you know, as I said, this was my piece de resistance, and um, I really think if the harm reduction, this is based on harm reduction, and then we get that wider knowledge out there just underpinning our way forward and that's what we have we're in a war of ideologies mm -hmm. yes. and the ideology underpinning their condescending medical model uh, approach to reducing smoking and use of all tobacco and nicotine products is one ideology and this course is coming from a completely the other ideology and and a more holistic viewing so yes for sure all right we're gonna have to go because the next panelists are already here thank you very um, much thank you for joining us thank you audience for joining us um i've posted the link a few times in chat so you can go back and find it for squirrelnut.net um and up next is anton so thank you good night bye good night, stay Nara. well everyone